So, uh, all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're 10 seconds into the episode and someone's <laughs> already. <laughs> all right. Um, look, I don't, I don't really know how to start this. We've had this idea for a while and it's never really happened. Uh, Keegan, so you know how to start this, right? <laughs> the way you said it, you just got to be like, I'm not I, sure I don't what know. to do with my hands. I'm, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what to do with my hands. Um, no, uh, we've been wanting to do a podcast of us just being assholes. I mean, the guy has two first names. <laughs> uh, uh, me and Dalton tried this, what, a couple years ago? and it just Last year? No, that was sober. It was last year. No, it was right before I started All Seasons. I'm going on almost two years. We're yeah, just getting yeah. so old, we lose track yeah, of time. I mean, right. That was my, uh, my my first attempt at sobriety, and then that didn't go so well. Uh, it probably didn't help with the way that we were running that podcast. But no, that was that was a podcast all about drinking. Yeah, hundred percent. Case Haven. Uh, no, so, uh, I guess we're we're just gonna call this semi serious because none of us take anything serious, as you could tell by Dalton opening our show with a. Earth rumbling <laughs> belch. Uh, so I guess let's get into introductions. Uh, I'm Keegan. This is uh, this is Bobby. Bobby, say hi. Hey. And, and I'm uh, Dalton. Dalton. Uh, should we should we debut the shirt today? Yellow. Fuck it. Uh, uh, while while he's going about taking his shirt off, uh, yeah, we're Whoa. two minutes in and it's already getting a little frisky in here. Dalton's over here belching and already taking off his shirts. Yeah, gotta love it. Welcome gotta love it. That one time in Bangkok. <coughs> that one time in Bangkok. I don't think we need that uh, heater over there. Ooh, let's get a little steamy in here, boys. <laughs> uh, let's see if this will load or not. I'm just here so I don't look on. <laughs> um, so I, I think the whole purpose of this show is we're just gonna. Talk about whatever comes to mind that day. There's not a whole lot that we really want to focus about. Obviously, we all have a big love for sports, whether that be football, baseball, or motorsports such as NASCAR, motocross, stuff like that. That's what I was about to say. We have sports opinions. And none of them are serious. Um, but on the side note, like if we don't find any topics that we find interesting, we're not going to talk about it because we'd rather have fun and come up with some entertaining <laughs> some entertaining conversations and I don't know if my computer's going to load. So, we'll be doing other things, talking about some stories, whatever dumb shit we got into throughout the week or the day. Uh we're going to try our best to keep this a weekly kind of podcast on Wednesdays and hopefully as summer comes, maybe we can get in a couple more days throughout the week, but I think we're going to start with one day a week and kind of go from there. Um, what do you guys want to talk about anything? I think Dalton had a couple of things he wanted to talk about. Go for baseball. it. Baseball. Baseball wise? All right. So, well, actually, let me just start out with this. How do you guys feel about the new rules to try and speed up America's pastime? Stop blocking out the games. Well, that's a good start right there. Absolutely stop blacking out the games. Plus, also, you know what? Fox Sports, I don't understand why I can't watch the Daytona 500 or any Fox game on Fox. I can watch FS1. I can watch FS2. I can watch Big Ten Network. But I can't watch Fox Sports on my Fox Sports app. No. You can't have that. Absolutely not. God, I am all over the place on this computer. I don't know what the hell is going on. It's like it's too cold. I think Steve Jobs is haunting you from the grave. Uh, apparently. God damn. Uh, I mean, some of the rules I'm all right with. I think a bigger base is fine. It's going to prevent injuries. Uh, the pitch clock, I'm not a big fan of, personally. I'm kind of curious to see how the no shifting is going to work out this year. I think that's the biggest one. I mean, they, they've had the no shift before. That's true. Before the shift was introduced, they had the no shift. But here's my thing with the shift is if you can't hit a 
against the shift, then how the hell did you make it to the MLB? Exactly. Fielding. Or just hitting bombs. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's how David Ortiz did it. Actually, there is a 35 or 35 minute compilation of David Ortiz beating the shift on on YouTube. Just hitting bombs. No. Oh, oh. He, he'd bunt up the third baseline or he'd half swing and fucking live one right up the third baseline or whatever. Yeah. But like you're in the MLB, if you can't go the other way, That's the worst part is none of the players were crying about the shift. No. I, you're not going to cry about something. Only, when only when you're in the dude. majors, when you're making that much money, you're not going to cry about it. Well, Machado cries a lot, but that's different. Because mentally he's like 14. But um, top headlines. Let's see what uh, let's see what ESPN has on here. Bobby, do you have anything that you want to throw in while I'm trying to look this shit up? Um, what do you guys think of uh, DK Metcalf getting uh, getting tested? I think I think the video is all. That's a really. I think it was edited. It's a and it's a really weird angle from the video too. Like I I can understand why the NFL would want to test him. Um. But like, if you actually watch the video, I think. It was. I think it was edited. Well, have you seen those uh, those insoles that a bunch of these players are using now? Yeah. Uh, God, do you remember what they're called? Have you seen those, no, Dalton? I haven't seen them at all. Um, let me. Uh, sports insoles. Let's see if that comes up. Um. But they're, they're these insoles that are basically springs, and they're be, they've been used in the NBA and the MLB a lot recently. I'm not sure about the NFL. But uh, it, it's been making people jump, like, inches higher on their... I feel like the just, NFL would have that it. shit banned immediately. That first one you saw, the victory gear. I was going to say, I couldn't remember the name of it, but... Yeah, a lot of people are using them, and um, it's been it's been like making their standing jump inches. So you know, bigger. you know who I would love to see that on a guy like Vince Wilfork. See if he can standing jump higher with that bad boy on. Oh, jeez, get get a big boy in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the the big reason behind them, and I mean, obviously, the spring action is going to make your jumps higher, but. Uh, you're getting less foot injuries, uh, less compression of the spine and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's medical reasons why. Wait, wait, wait. Does that say 0. 0.12 second faster 40-yard dash? Okay. So, Dion would have ran a 4.15? Yeah, apparently. That's crazy. Um, how much do what, I believe What would Tyreek Hill run? Dion was faster than Tyreek. Yeah. Tyreek uh, would have ran a 4.23 because he ran a 4.35. What was uh, – John Ross was a four three three. What was, was Chris? Who? Is it Chris Johnson? He was he was a four two eight. Right. So he would have ran a four sixteen. So Dion still would have been faster. Jesus. But then again, Dion's was unofficial. Unofficial. Unofficially official. Uh who was it that just uh <clears throat> That just ran a like a four two. Was that a Ocho Cinco? Uh, like a four two or four three, and he's like fifty. No, Tio, because Tio was gonna come back. It was Terrell Owens. Was it Tio? Well, and Moss. No, Moss ran a four three five, and then I think Tio ran like a four three eight. That, I remember one. Forty or fifty years old. We can't hear you right now. I remember one of them had just posted. Like a video of him, uh, absolutely just smoking down the the sideline at like fifty years old. Well, I've seen. I don't know if either of you guys have seen, but I think there's a video out there where To uh, was like running routes and stuff like that, 
and like racing Tyreek Hill and stuff. And even at his age, well, like Tio, Tio at one point in time was going to come back to the Cowboys this year. He had talked to him. He had told him if he offered me to come well, back. Oh, he talks about that like every year. Well, well I understand that. He he wanted more money than what I would have been wanting to give up. Like he was wanting millions. More than T.Y. got? Yeah. Okay. He wanted more than what T.Y. Yeah. No. By the way, looking this up, the – so, actually, John Ross ran a 4-2-2. That is the – Dion's was 4-1-7 – or Champ Bailey was 4-1-7 reportedly. Right. Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) So, John Ross would have had a 4-1 with this. You know what I want to see? I want to see Usain Bolt in the 40 yard dash. Prime Usain Bolt. Dude, I think we need to put these to the test. I want to see Usain Bolt play an NFL game. So if you go back to Madden 25, they have random rosters, and one of them has Usain Bolt, and that is an absolute possibility. I would love to see Usain Bolt. That would be as also, a wide out. Dude, also, as FIFA <laughs> had Usain Bolt for a little bit on FIFA 21, I think it was. Absolutely nutty. Or Usain Bolt as a running back, just give him like a freaking clear hole down the middle and just take off. Usain Bolt would be the Devin Hester of kick returners. He runs fast, but the minute you hit him, he's dropping that ball. Oh, absolutely. Um, can we go back to the drug testing thing real quick? Yeah, yeah, go for so it. So when you guys are talking about the, the drug testing, the random drug testing, remember that Matt Judon, out of all people, got drug tested five times this year and tested clean every time. Who was it a couple of years ago that was getting tested like every almost every week? Miles Garrett got tested because he didn't wear sleeves. And, you, and you're going to tell me this is random? Because he wasn't wearing sleeves. Literally, he he had four sacks and didn't wear his orange sleeves. And they saw his arms, and he got drug tested the week the week after. It wasn't even forty five minutes after the game. He had a text from the NFL. Jesus. JJ Watt just got drug tested, or just got texted today about a drug test for HGH, and he's retired. Dude, look, hot take. If these players want to use steroids or something else, let them. I think it's going to make the game a lot more entertaining. Same thing with MLB. Just get away with it because you're just making a mockery of yourself by testing these players every week because they have a good game or something like that. Well, the MLB is not testing every week. Uh, that was more towards, like, NFL. Yeah. But, like, just – it's gonna make the games more exciting. I want to. I want to see some dude hitting 532 foot home runs every every week. Just imagine if Aaron Judge or Giancarlo Stanton was Aaron using Judge is steroids. Already on steroids. Dead ass. No way in hell he's not. Bobby, I know you're a Yankees fan, but you have to admit, at least one point in time, he had to have. I don't think I, so. If Aaron Judge isn't on steroids, then LeBron James never flops. Well, he, LeBron he flops. Doesn't. He said in the beginning of the season that he needed to learn how to flop. <laughs> Bullshit. Even though he's the flop king. <laughs> LeBron James literally said in the beginning of the season in one of his interviews that he needs to learn how to flop. And it's like, bro, you are the flop king. See, I've watched his son play some of like the highlight mixtapes that pop up on Snapchat. Right. He needs to teach his dad because he is a huge flopper. I think he learned from his father. Hey, look, everyone's got to be good at something, right? But I don't think Aaron Judge is using because, like, you look at the way that he – you look at the way that he looked in, like, the end of his high school career and even, like, his college career, like, he still looks the same. He's still the same size. He's just always been big. But here's my thing. In his high school career, was he getting close to home run records every year? Because if you can do it in the MLB, you should be able to do it in high school. Absolutely. If you're hitting 480 and 490 foot bombs in the MLB, in high school you should be at least, granted all fields are usually, you know, Solon was 305 to left, or 310 to left, 305 to right, 385 to center. 
you should be hitting at least 440 in the center. He's, he's got a point. I mean, these kids aren't throwing a 102-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle for him to slug, but when you're hitting with a BB core bat, well, those B things should be – Well, BB core is dog shit. BB core is a wood wrapped in metal. If you were hitting with a BESRs like he would have because he's my age, then you should be hitting 440-foot bombs. Absolutely. In high school. You should have the home run record in your state if you're doing what you're doing now without steroids. I mean, granted – Without, quote-unquote. Granted, you and me were – up there one time just doing BP. I mean, how hard were we hitting those things down at the softball diamonds? Yeah, I mean, remember we were we were clearing we were the highway. The road. Yeah, we were clearing the highway. I mean, and that's just us dicking around. I don't know. I, is he clean now? Maybe. That's because they waited till the postseason to even think about doing anything to him. And by that, but point, I mean it, it. It would still show up at this point, but. It would something would show up. Maybe the fucking Viagra he had because the steroids made his dick smaller. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't just ask his wife. <laughs> ask his wife. <laughs> I'm gonna tweet Aaron Judge's wife right now. Dead ass. I will. Is it smaller than it was April of last year? <laughs> Did he go from four inches to three and a half? <laughs> Bobby, you feel that pain, don't you? Hey, Bobby's three and a half on a good day. You got something to say over there, Yankees fan? I refuse to talk about my penis size. Actually, speaking of Little League, can we talk about how you guys play in a Little League field? <laughs> Like, I could pop out and hit a home run to right field in Yankee Stadium. Why do you think Rizzo increased his home run total with yeah, the I mean, Cubs? It's, it's like 20 feet down the line to get a home run there. I could play at Polo Grounds. First base on is 90 MLB. feet away. You could still hit a home run closer than getting to first. I could, play at po I could play at Polo Grounds on MLB The Show and hit less home runs than I would at Yankee Stadium. Turn your music up. I couldn't hear it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Thumping. How many home runs did the Yankees hit on away games compared to home games last year? About half as much. Unless they played in Oriole Park because they hit it to right field and that's still shorter. Sorry, Camden Yards. Oriole Park at Camden Yards. And, I mean, not going to lie, Fenway – you hook one around Pesky's pole. That's about 390. Then again, right field in Yankee Stadium is 315. So. <laughs> There's a reason Roger Maris hit 61 and the Yankees have both the uh, the all-time MLB home run records. Fuck Bonds. Fuck McGuire. And as a Cubs fan, Sosa's record doesn't count either. Nope. It's... Judge, well, it's Marius, and then judge when they test him clean. Oh, what the hell is that? I love all the people that try and defend it, that Babe Ruth hit his 60 home run season on cocaine and hot dogs and beer. I mean, I would too if I was living back then. Absolutely. It was way easier to get like back then. <laughs> Now you got to call a guy that knows a guy that I mean, knows another guy and make sure he's not a cop. Who was it? Uh, uh, Doc Ellis? Yeah. Yep. He Throw yeah. a no-hitter on LSD. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get away with that today. I dare you. Speaking of Docs. So there was, a, there was a documentary that I was watching on Babe Ruth. Yeah. And uh, there's a story that they were telling about how the Red Sox took him out one night. Got him completely plastered. And he came in the next day and just beat the shit out of him. And then Babe Ruth went over to their dugout and looked at him and was like, where are we going tonight? <laughs> <laughs> can we talk – actually, while we're on the topic of Babe Ruth, can we talk about this guy? So there's a guy that isn't credited with a no-hitter or a perfect game but retired all 27 he faced 
because he came in for a leave with Babe Ruth, who got ejected from punching the umpire. <laughs> that man's a fucking legend. Uh, dude's got a, a perfect game save, basically. <laughs> um, let's do something weird. How about, if this will load, 20 of the strangest NFL facts ever. I bet you my phone will load before your computer does. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Look, my internet is ass from down here. It's trying to go through the garage and then through the front door. And then and up then, the stairs. Yeah, it's confused. It took a left when it should have taken a right. I. Then it has to ask the girlfriend if it's okay to use it. <laughs> Not that you don't. The internet does. Um. All right. We'll start off with number 20. Uh, maybe if it doesn't keep reloading. The Chicago Bears have never had a 4,000-yard passer. Absolutely. I 100% can see that. I can see that. I, Chicago I Bears know. also don't know where the goal line's at, so. Um, I'm, I'm honestly. They don't know where the field goal post is either. <laughs> I, I'm kind of surprised. you're a Cowboys fan, you're going to talk about this? What? I no. did not hear. Because of one game? Cody Parkies was one game. Cody Parkies was one kick. Greg Josephs was four. Five if you count the next game, Bobby. You, you talk about Brett Maher? Or yeah, Brett Maher, sorry. Get the Not name Greg right. Joseph. Oh, I should know it because okay. I always fucking pull his car in Madden when I don't want to. Brett may be Maher, man. Barely maybe. Barely maybe. <laughs> He's been dropped to barely maybe now. No, it's Brett barely maybe Maher. Get it right. I've been saying that for years. Um, let's see here. Yeah, apparently no one's cracked four thousand. Cutler eclipsed three thousand yards five times. <laughs> Jay, ice cold Cutler. I like does here. That, I like here at mean, the end. Does that mean that Jay Cutler is the best quarterback that the Bears have ever had? Absolutely, he hundred percent is. Either that or it's Robbie Grossman. Hey, they had Jim McMahon for a while. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't lighting up the scoreboard, but he did enough to win a Super Bowl for him. Just I just I just want everybody to take that in. Jay Cutler is probably the best quarterback the Chicago Bears have ever had. Okay, so if we're going to talk about this, if you're going to talk about that Jim McMahon won the Super Bowl for him, if that's the case, then Tom Brady won that Super Bowl against the Chiefs and not the defense. It was defense. I'm not saying. Look, you still need a confident quarterback to at least get you. If you have someone throwing eight interceptions a game, it doesn't matter how good your defense is doing. Or you just don't throw the ball. Remind you, last year in the Madden Bowl, well, Joke won the Madden Bowl without a quarterback. He had Tressway at quarterback. Look, the NFL was a run-first game back then, so he probably wasn't throwing the ball. Well, that's true. Long. You got Walter Payton the fucking back. I was going to say, yeah. you, you had a Walter Payton back yeah, if you got Or Gale Sayers, if you, one of the two. If you got sweetness you behind you, it's – uh, hand the ball off till you get to the red zone, and then it's like being it's like being a soul in the James Morris. Hey guys, there is hope. There is hope. Number nineteen, an NFL commissioner once died in the stands during a game. Which one was it? Um, Burt Bell. Yeah, Burt Bell in 1959. In a meaningless game, apparently it says. Eagles and the Steelers. That's pretty meaningless. Yeah. Um. So oh. The Detroit Lions have had two separate stretches of 30 years without a playoff win. Jeez. And with, all due, res- and with all due respect to you two, the Cowboys were on their way to that until this year. They just won a couple years ago. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Dak has one playoff win. Sorry. And so does Romo. No, Dak. Well, nah, now Dak has one. No, Dak has, Dak has two. Maybe even three. No, he's got two for sure. I don't think it's at least two because he beat the Seahawks his second or third season, and they just won the first matchup. Don't quote me on that. Two and four in the playoffs. Two and four. four. Okay. Jing Chiu, me kiss on the lips, Bobby. Come here. Uh huh. Anyway, it, like, do you know how insane that is to think? Two separate stretches of 30 years without a playoff win. And we thought we were, we thought the Browns were bad. 
Cleveland. Hey, this is only seven. Hey, we're only at eighteen. Dude, we we yeah. still have seventeen. Well, more. What I'm saying is, Cleveland still at least has an NFL. Well, not an NFL, but an AFL championship. Look, you know this. this but this, that was when they were I, Baltimore, I, wasn't it? No, it was Cleveland Browns. Was it Cleveland? Yeah, I think this Jim is Brown running the rock. This is the most insane part of that stat. In 1957, the Lions took home their third NFL championship of the decade. And it's been 65 years. And they traded him to, the, <laughs> they traded him to, the Pittsburgh, to Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, I don't care. They knocked off the Packers this year, so I'm good. Absolutely. Aaron Rodgers that was beautiful. Diva. Dude, he's going, he's going to the Raiders. He's going back with Devontae. He's going to the Raiders. See, what I don't like is Aaron Rodgers, you know – my buddy's a diehard Packers fan. My buddy Jake is. And he's sitting there and he's – I was telling him about how Aaron Rodgers says he's going to do that four-day retreat. I was like, yeah, he needs, he needs all the attention on him again. He needs everybody to be talking about him. Because like, how do you know Rodgers said it? And I pulled up the tweet. He goes, yeah, but that could have been leaked from somebody else. I was like, no. No, he said it on the Pat McAfee show. Exactly. He said he's going on a four-day retreat to, to figure out his NFL career. I, to be honest – you know who I would rather take over Aaron Rodgers just in the locker room? Not not based on quality at all, even though he was pretty damn good. Tim Tebow. Yeah. Tim Tebow has as many playoff wins as Aaron Rodgers does Super Bowls. Think about that for a second. Um, well, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go on to the next step. <laughs> uh so, since its creation, every NFC South team has both finished last in the division and appeared in at least one Super Bowl. I could see that. Well, cause, yeah, because the Panthers played the Patriots. Or no, NFC South. That's not the Panthers. That's AFC yeah. South. So, the Buccaneers. No. Panthers aren't in it. Panthers are AFC South. Oh, that's – it, NFC, NFC South. South. The Buccaneers have been there twice. Yeah. The, the Falcons. Saints, the Falcons. The Panthers fell short. So, yeah, it is the yeah, Panthers. Yeah, the Panthers yeah, are in the NFC South. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's, that's right. Saints, AFC South is the Titans. Saints, Panthers. Yeah, AFC South, South is the yes. Titans. That's the blue team I was yeah. talking about. So, yeah, the Panthers who lost. Well, they lost. Super Bowl 50, and then they, they the, lost to uh, the well, Patriots in the, the early 2000s. Well, yeah, they lost Cam- to the Patriots, and then they lost to Roger Goodell because Peyton Manning was retiring. Well, Which I was Cam- fine with. I didn't want to see Cam win that person. I was going to say, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't want to see Cam. It shouldn't have even been Peyton Manning. Gronk gets held four times in the end zone. Nothing's called, but God forbid he touches somebody. Should have been Patriots, Ooh. Panthers. All right. You know, as a Philly hater, this one kind of – I feel bad for you guys. The New York Jets have never beaten the Philadelphia Eagles. How really? You, why would you feel bad for Philadelphia? No, I feel bad for the Jets. Oh, I don't feel bad for the Jets. They beat the Patriots before. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't like the Jets, but – if they can knock off the Eagles. All right, so in, in NFC, you know, hate aside, as a Jets fan, would you rather beat the Patriots of 2000 to, like, 2016 or the Eagles? Just depends on the year and depends on the circumstance. Here's the thing is, if, if you beat the Patriots, that would possibly – mean playoff implications or you're in the playoffs, whereas if you beat the Eagles, that would mean you had to get the Super Bowl, and it's the Jets we're talking about here. you got to remember they had Geno Smith at quarterback who finally well, became – But that's why, that's why I said what, it just what, depends what, on what the circumstance is because if you're talking early in the year or something like that, I mean, if the Jets beat the Patriots, I mean, it's probably one of those things where it doesn't matter. We're bringing Namath out of retirement. He's winning a second one. I heard Aaron Rodgers going – um, so uh, this one, this one sucks as a Cowboys fan. The Cowboys have never won a game in Lambeau Field until two thousand and eight. I think that's a lot of games we've played in there. So actually, I, w- I want to see this. Then I want to see what the record is for that because if it's like only like ten games, that's. But if you're playing thirty or forty total in since, that time, since oh wait no, so that says since then um, since nineteen sixty so. That's our starting point. Okay. Ten. It took until the Cowboys' tenth trip to the frozen tundra in 2008 to grab a victory. But they have also played there five times since, winning just one more. Yeah, that's that's still rough. 
I don't know. Yeah. Lambeau is a hard place to play. You know what's worse, though? The Cardinals didn't win in Green Bay between 1947 and 2018. I could absolutely see that. You know what's even worse than that? The Chiefs have a better record at the Cardinals stadium than the Cardinals did this year. No, they don't. The Chiefs are one, and the official the Chiefs have won one. The officials have won one, and the Cardinals have won one. Oh, it's all get the same. out of here! But but it still goes in the win column for the Chiefs, does it not? Okay, then I don't want to hear another thing about Deflate Gate or anything like that for Tom Brady. Because even Goodell Deadass came out and said that Deflate Gate was a joke. But yet we still hear about it. Stop living in the past, bro. We're all over that. Yeah, we're, we're just talking about what happened like a week ago. I'm just saying, like, by the stat, they have a better record yes, than the Cardinals' I, I, I home stadium. Which, so, actually, speaking of that, the, the funniest thing, the funniest tweet of last year, it was the, I think it was the Packers threw a, a game-losing pick in Arizona. Or no, Arizona did against the Packers. And the Patriots tweeted out, in general, something about game winning and interceptions in Arizona. Am I right? Um, to go along with that fact, though, the Cardinals, in fact, have relocated more times since then, since 1947, than they have picked up a win in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that, though? Look at that. The Long Chicago stretches Cardinals. in Chicago, St. Louis, and Arizona proved unfruitful until the then 2-9 and nine Cardinals walked into Lambeau Field Led by, by Josh oh, Rosen. <laughs> and a team that would finish rock bottom of the NFL. Big Dick wow. JR, baby. Big Dick JR. Wow. Um, I have no idea who this guy is. Sammy Baugh. Uh, Sammy Baugh. Quarterback, punter, defensive back. Yeah, so he once threw four touchdown passes as a quarterback, had an 81-yard punt, and caught four interceptions as a DB in the same game. Yep. So at one Good. point in time, he held at one point in time he held the NFL record for longest punt until a few years ago. Wow. When the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shane Leckler. Shane Leckler. Shane Leckler broke that record, and then <laughs> the man. The uh, not so good man Matt Ariaza broke it last year with an 87 yard punt. Uh, Walter Payton only won a single rushing title in his career. That one's surprising, but he would also pick up an MVP and Offensive Player of the Year honor. In the same year that he won. His rushing <laughs> title. Yeah, that's wow. I mean, I could see it 100%. Um, yeah, to think a player that had had the record for the most career rushing yards at one point only had one season in which he had the most rushing yards is a little weird. Uh, the youngest Hall of Fame inductee was 34. Absolutely. Do we, do we know who it is? Deal players. Brian's song is such a great movie. Um, so this one's kind of about college as well. College juniors weren't draft eligible until 1990. Uh, Which is so crazy because you look at like the way that draft is with the NFL and how like <coughs> college junior, juniors weren't eligible until 1990. But like the NBA, you can pick somebody. You're high one and done. Or I mean, well, I mean, yeah. yeah back MLB, then you were able to do right out of high school. Right yeah. out of high school. Yeah, MLB for that fact too. Yeah. Well, granted, you're not going to be playing right, right well, away. Granted, uh, the MLB you can still go right out of high school. Yeah, yeah. you can still get drafted. In I mean, you're not going to play right away. Yeah. Yeah. You like, won't play for like probably Derek, four to five years. Derek Lovelace that I played with, he got drafted right out of high school. Um, he spent some time in the minors, and then now he doesn't play. I think he still play. I think he still plays like a a league somewhere, like a semi pro league. But but like just to compare the the three of them, though, like how you have oh, the major leagues and the NBA from straight out of high school, and I mean you couldn't come into the NFL 
since you know out of it as a junior. All right. So this next one. I, I want to see. I want to see if Bobby knows who it is. So. Okay. Just a sec. Want to make it known to people. Kickers are people too well, because and, a and kicker punters, once won punters. MVP. And punters. Well, those are people too. I, I lump them together. Shout out Johnny Hecker. Lump them together. 1982. Um. Does it not have his name in here? Oh, uh, I'll look it up. I'll yeah, look it up because apparently his name isn't in here. Um, it was a strike shortened season. Um, I see. I don't, Bobby. I don't even think you'll know this. I, I I'm not even. I, guarantee I, I won't. Who Who do you play for? Who do you play for? The uh, at the time the Washington Native Americans to be PC on this. Hmm. Couldn't even tell you. Mark D. Wayne Mosley. Wow. Interesting. And he won MVP of the league? Yep. Yeah, league MVP. Yeah, because that year. What year was it? 1982. Let me go out and figure out the, uh, the stats on this. Let yeah. me see what he was in 1982. So if it was a strike shortened season, how many games did they play? Uh, nine games, it says. Or at least he played in nine games. 20 for 21 on field goals. Uh, five for six from over f- or from 40 to 49. Eight for eight from 30 to 40 yards. Six for six, one for one. So the only one he missed was 40 plus. So dude was money, though. His long was 48. 16 for 19 on extra points and 76 points total. Look, if a kicker could win it back then, I understand it's a shortened year, but Justin Tucker deserves an MVP then. Absolutely. Okay. I'm glad we're going to agree on that one. And Cody Parkey deserves an MVP at absolutely screwing Chicago. <laughs> Doing Chicago Adam, things. Adam Vinatieri should have won. Actually, can we talk about can we talk about Chisel and Adam's whole thing about Nick Folk and now Nick Folk held the longest streak from under 40 yards? Dude, that dude couldn't do anything Against. for the Cowboys. Well, or Tampa Bay either against. No, but the, you know what? What irritated me is he didn't do anything for the Cowboys. We let him go, and he goes to the Jets, and he beats us on a fifty-six yard field goal in Dallas. And then you know, you know what I really didn't like is against the Bucks last year. Bill Belichick decides to have Nick Folk kick a sixty-one yarder in the wind and rain. On fourth and three with 58 seconds left. Did he make it? No, he didn't. You have 58 seconds left. It's fourth and three. Why go for the tie when you could go for the win? Don't question Belichick. I know. I feel Bill in his hoodie just looking over my shoulder. Right <laughs> now. It's because he doesn't believe in Jones. It's not. I don't think anybody does. It's not really. so much. As a Patriots fan, I'm going to say this right now. Do not hold this year against Mac Jones. No, it's again. Last year we Matt had Matt Patricia. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> against Matt Patricia. Like, <laughs> that may be some of the worst coaching I've ever seen. How are you going to hire your old defensive coordinator back who couldn't be a head coach and be like, offense? I'm going to let you call the offense. <laughs> That'd be like if the Cowboys. Hired Michael Irvin and had him do defense. No, we're bringing Jason Garrett back. He's going to be the punter coach. Bring Sean Lee back as an offensive coordinator. I wouldn't. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that. You said offensive coordinator. I was like, as a defensive coordinator, great. Sean Lee would be a great defensive coordinator. You know who I, I want to see? Would. You know who I want to see back? And actually, by the way, speaking of coaches right now, did you hear who the Colts – possible new OC is the best coaching name in football Jim Bob Cooter Jim Bob Cooter he is going to be the new OC of the Colts wow uh so I guess from 1960 to 1969 there was not just one first loser there was a third place game 
Well, that's the second loser. Well, I'm saying there's not just a first place loser. There's right. two. There's not one. Per, there's not a first loser. There's yeah. a first and a second loser. The but Burt the, the fact Bell that, Benefit Bowl. No, but see, look, the fact that it says there was a third place game means there had to have been a fourth team, right? Or did the loser of the Super Bowl or no, I guess no, the no, no, no? Game? It'd be like a consolation match. Yeah, it'd be like a consolation. You have one and two play and three and four play, and whoever wins gets third. That means so they pretty get, much the two teams that lost to the two teams that, that led the Super participation Bowl. trophy. All right, let's see what this yeah, says. They think um, participation trophies are a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we were getting them when I was in elementary yeah. school. The Benefit Bowl pitted the two conference runners up against one another for third place. Did you get a trophy if you won it, though? Because, like, it's Let, let's the championship this. light. Let's look this up. Um, I, get, I bet it, it might say in here, actually. Benefit Bowl. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, Vince Lombardi, who used words I won't repeat here to describe it, to an all-pro defensive lineman, Roger Brown who played in half of the ten benefit bowls between his time in Detroit and Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, if you're in Detroit and Los Angeles, you're already screwed. Whether that be the Chargers, the Rams, or the Raiders when they were there, you're already screwed. Well, I guess Madden had those Raiders, so Madden would have been good. But How about this one? The dead, way, this is also the dead skins. Know. The dead skins haven't shut another team out since 1991. Good God, I 100 percent can I I would 100 percent see that. What I like the most, though, I know I saw that I, September I know, 30th. That's absolutely, what you like about this? <laughs> it was a 23 to nothing defeat of the division rival Eagles. Their last shutout was the Eagles. Wow. This is so the uh, the benefit bowl was played at the Orange Bowl Stadium in Miami. I mean, that's kind of cool. In order to give the Dolphins something to brag about. <laughs> <laughs> the f- All right, this, one, this, one's pretty, this one's pretty well known. The first player to catch an NFL pass from Brett Favre was Brett Favre. And I guess while we're on that topic, what do you guys think about Brett Favre trying to sue Pat McAfee? For what? I haven't seen anything on this. You haven't heard? Oh, no, my God, have. dude. So he's suing him for... Defamate, defamation or something like yeah, that. Yeah, defamation of character. Yeah. Because About he, the whole... Because uh, of the whole suing or the whole, like... Dick pic thing? No, 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 no not even the dick, dick pic thing. It was the... Uh, he's taking money from yeah, he was investors. Like, trying Are to... He was, he was yeah, like, putting yeah, the, it's a big thing. I think he was, like, putting the money towards, uh, towards, like, a new stadium or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anything ever came out of it. But uh, but yeah, he was suing. He's suing Pat McAfee and he's suing somebody else. Um, uh, Shannon Sharp. Yeah. I'm surprised you hadn't seen that yet. Yeah, look that up. It, I, I got it right here. Not loading very well. Brett Favre sues Shannon Sharp, Pat McAfee, and auditor for defamation. Brett Favre's lawyer says Pat McAfee could go bankrupt and will learn his lesson after No, not happening. Lawsuit. Not happening. Good luck with that one. Look, if I'm going to be honest, the whole reason we're here right now in front of these microphones and this camera is because of Pat McAfee, if I'm going to be completely honest. Absolutely. Uh, he's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this. So. Well, and also listen to this. This was Valentine's Day. Brett Favre files another motion to dismiss Mississippi lawsuit against him in a welfare fraud scheme. So he's suing Pat McAfee and those guys, but he's also trying to get his name pulled out of it? Yep. <laughs> uh, the NFL integrated twice. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The NFL made in season in 1920. They, they had integration back in 1920, but then they segregated – Entirely in 1933. What happened in 13 years that you're like, nah? Were were they just, were they too good? <laughs> were they? I was about, I was about, I wasn't about to bring up that point because that could be a little on the non PC side. But that's why <laughs> I waited for you. I'm gonna bring it up. Like, by the way, Fritz Pollard, absolutely one of the best running backs of all time, that doesn't get any recognition for it because of that thing. Yeah. Um. Pro football as a whole first integrated with 
the Shelby Blues Charles Follis in 1904. Hmm. So that it integrated three times. Well, so that that wasn't the NFL. That was just pro football. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. Um, the Patriots were almost named the Bay State Patriots. I I can see it. So, however, I, I I can see it, but I can't see it because you think Bay, you think the Bay Area, you think San Francisco, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. You don't think New England? No, not at all. Um, so I guess Chesapeake Bay. I guess this is a reason why cheeseheads are insane. The season ticket wait list in Green Bay is well over a thousand years long. All right, so if I apply for season tickets now and I raise great, 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 and time, like times fifty grandkids that somehow end up being Packers fans, I'm gonna turn over in the grave. But they'll get their season tickets. I'll put it on there right now. But yeah, that's what it is right now, though. Half the, half the but, Packers fans, I mean, they're pay, they're handing them down to their families. That's what I'm saying. If I get my name on the list right now, here, actually. You said that, what a nice Christmas gift for your great, 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 great. <laughs> you get the point. That's why I went through six and said <laughs> plus ten. Uh, all right. The, the Houston Oilers have won their division more recently than the Cleveland Browns. Because they're the Tennessee Titans. No, I think they mean the Houston Oilers. The Houston Oilers. Well, yeah. Before they, before they moved. Twice, twice in 91 season. and 93. Yeah. No, I understand that. But also because – they're now the Tennessee Titans. So even the 91 and 93, but even if the Browns won it in 2014, they could still say they won it earlier than that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me see this shit right here. Which one? The, the number one that you're about to read. <laughs> I got to read this thing. Uh, while you're reading, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, Doug Williams has as many Super Bowl touchdown passes as the Denver Broncos. How many Super Bowl appearances do the Broncos have? Compared Eight to times. <laughs> wow. Mm. But you know what a lot of that was? Terrell Davis. Wow. Well, that was kind of a kind of a weird stat to end on, but you guys want to hear a crazier stat that you should bring out at your next parties? Who's the pitcher that has the most gold gloves? Or who has the most gold gloves in general? I don't know if I know this one. I don't know this one. Greg Maddox. 18 gold gloves. I can see it. I can see it. Yep. Greg Maddox has the most gold gloves of any MLB player ever. And he's a pitcher. <laughs> Pitchers are people, too. We can't hit, but damn it, we're people, too. <laughs> hey, some of them can bond. Actually, no. See, None of them hit anymore. That's another thing that I hate. The Cubs have the most destructive pitching staff with a bat. And then the MLB's Dude. like, nah, we're going to implement the DH for every league. Bro, <laughs> I was at Wrigley when Lester went yard, and the place went insane. Place also went insane when Lester finally picked somebody off because he does not like throwing debates. No, no. As a Red no, Sox no. fan, I absolutely understand this. Um, you would have a better chance. And I, I'm going to take a little jab at you guys. You would have a better chance of Tony Romo holding a field goal than John Lester picking somebody off. <laughs> Because Romo's held more than that one that he, you know, he shouldn't have even been out there for no, him. Shouldn't have been. No, shouldn't have. You know, the crazy thing is after that year, because almost every team did it where the backup quarterback was a holder. After that year, it was strictly punters. And the crazy thing is, is in Madden, your backup quarterback is still your holder. <laughs> what? That's why I sub in 99 Tom Brady with 91 speed. Oh, my God. Hundred random sports facts you never knew. Well, we'll know now. 
Ken Griffey Jr. That's who it was, the kid. That's who that one was about. Oh. It's not showing us what yeah, this week's not, was. Yeah, it's not loading, so. <laughs> but he had a candy bar named after him? That's what it just said. That's what it's on there. I'll go under it. I'll bleach report. Bleach report, 100 random sports facts you never knew. Um, I might have to do this on my phone because I want to see if you guys can yeah. guess. Uh, yeah, go for it. Easy killer. I just said it. Easy killer. <sighs> you come back up here. You sit right over there. Stop. We'll just do a swap when you... Uh, is the heater still on or is it? did it turn off? Turn that on. I say it should still be on. Move it a little bit closer. Um, just don't burn yourself. I was just checking where it's hot. Can we go in front of the camera? Uh, it's not going to reach that far because of the cord. Just put it right behind it. Yeah, try try and get some of that heat coming. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get a better heater this weekend. So that hopefully, which I think next week's supposed to be a little bit warmer anyways, but. Uh, just give me one second. I'm going to. All right, while well, well, they're stepping out for a second, um, I'm going to try and find some random facts to try and see if they can't guess who I'm talking about. It is freezing in here with that door open, though. Oh, my God. What's the weather like? Um, it's kind of weird sitting here by myself now. Uh, no, um, I want to... I want to have this kind of outreach into other areas. I don't want this strictly to be about sports. I want to be able to just talk about stories, some shit that we like, and uh, hopefully get input from you guys on what you guys want to hear about. Um, obviously, none of us are good at this. We are, in fact, very awful at what we're doing right now, but we're going to learn, and we're going to learn with you guys and with each other, and we're going to hopefully put out a good product, but they're coming back, so I'm going to mute this so that the garage door does not get all loud. So, be right back. This man's trying to take his shirt off right in front of the camera. She I'm right here. <laughs> you can't even see my hand. I'm looking at the screen right now. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't gotta be so aggressive about it, man. It's a joke. It's a tight shirt. I bought it. I bought it. The did you buy it in the kids section? No, I bought it from Raven back when I was about 40 pounds lighter. Here you go, Keegan. There's that, uh, that picture right in the bear shirt I was talking about. Dude, we're going to hang that. It doesn't fit me anymore. See, I hang that up. We're going to hang it. I got to get a hanger. Holy shnikes. You can cover it. Holy shnikes. <laughs> I need to bring a hanger, but we're going to We're gonna hang it right up here behind uh, behind the set. Um, oh, we'll leave that here and that there. Whoa! Calm down, Bigfoot. Jeez, sorry, I were size 15s. Oh, dude, you knocked all of her watches. And off. you knocked, bro. Dude, she's gonna be so mad. <laughs> Put them back on. They, they she's going those, to kill you. Those two empty uh, tacks, yeah. 
She's going to kill you or she's going to kill Keegan. Well. No, Keegan was probably with me and she'll kill me. Yeah. Or she'll text my wife and my wife killed me in my sleep. Look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. She asked why her watch is cracked. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Guys. Just miss- know that everything that hey, happens hey, on this show. Stop yelling. I've already turned down your mic like eight times. Stop yeah, yelling. I've watched it happen. Um, just know everything that happens on this episode is all Dalton's fault. Um, no, I just wanted to, I wanted to say that the, the mystery is solved. We have found Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Case closed. It is. <laughs> and yes, I have a big mouth. Okay. Unsolved mysteries is. Uh, <laughs> Call off the beds. We're good. <laughs> Hey, don't put that on the heater. You might set it on fire. <laughs> Look, man, I found that heater upstairs at work. I don't know how. There it is. It's a, it's a garage that we're recording in. Well, I, <laughs> I just want, I just want to make it known. I just want to make it known we're currently recording in a garage. There's probably a lot of cobwebs, cobwebs in here, so. Uh, Listen, princess, put a shirt back on. It's like four degrees. What are you talking about? I ran out to negative degree temperature and snow and you jumped out of the window smiling for it. With all that hair, I can see why you'd be warm. <laughs> Just a little bit. Do you have any shirts that fit you properly? Gave them to me in fact. Oh my god. They gave them to me, but then they took away my employee discount, so I refused to wear them. Maybe on our next episode, Dalton can wear a shirt that actually fits him. I'm gonna give him a tutu to wear. I'll get a tutu. bed sheet. I'll walk in that, Bobby. How does that work? Toga. I'm going to go with the lady guy on the dress real quick. So any college basketball fans, Kentucky is currently leading Florida 74 to 67. Bobby, the game ends in two minutes. The episode's going to air like hours after the game's over. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> he just wants to let them know what time zone we're in right now and where we're at right now. Hey, Florida scored. 74 to 70. Maybe, hey, right now, we could be experiencing a Florida comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Last play, Kentucky timeout. If Florida comes back from this, that would give them more comebacks than the Miami Dolphins. (laughs) I I feel sorry for the Dolphins right now. How about Tua? (laughs) Tua needs to retire now before he ends up killing himself. Or getting killed. Yeah, that's more likely, unfortunately. That brings me to another topic that we had uh, to discuss. All right, you guys didn't take on this or input on this. How about you wait until you're back in front of the microphone? I won't do it unless I can get in there. Four hours later. USA beats Brazil. At least one of our teams can beat Brazil. <laughs> our men's team can't. Wow. Um. All right. You you good now? It's good to have you back. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm back. All right, so discussion time on this. Let me explain this whole situation before the start. One of my buddies on Xbox, who is a Chiefs fan, naturally, one of the third most toxic people in the world right now. I can name a few more. I'm talking fan bases. One, Ohio State. That's a given. Two,
I'm trying to figure out how to say this with the uh, the most respect to you two. Because you guys, you guys don't still live in your championships in the 90s, but there are some. No, because I wasn't alive for any of them. Well, that's Dude, true. Th- so, their last, I want to say their last Super Bowl win happened four days before I was born or something like that. But, but there are. Well, yes, but I think it happened like four days before I was born. So, yeah. I mean, I. I was like two. I don't. But, but there. And actually, I wouldn't even put you guys at two, but there are some Cowboys fans that are way worse than – I mean, you guys are good Cowboys fans. So, we're realistic. So, yeah. <laughs> Just put so it that you're way. Talk, you're talking about, like, the most annoying fan bases. Hey, but did you guys see no, the – most toxic fan bases right now. All right, Do- Dodgers. Dodgers. It goes Chiefs, Dodgers, and Bobby, just because of the way they act and all the shit they've done to players, the New York Yankees. Eagles. Their fans are just how, uh, That's what I'm trying to figure out. How are the Eagles not number one right now? All the Chiefs dick riders? Did the Chiefs have to put oil on their poles to make sure they didn't climb them and destroy their own city? Okay, so if we're going to bring that part into effect, let's talk about the Tennessee Volunteers. They beat Alabama. They took the goalposts out of the stands and threw them in the river. There was already a police team ready to be there to recover the goalposts from the river. Dude, all I'll say is... I, I, I don't know. I don't compare the two because Tennessee destroyed their stuff. They didn't go out into the streets and completely destroy their own city. Like, how are you going to compare, like, Tennessee taking down a... Like yes, it's well, bad. and, and, I, and it looks you know, bad. I like, can't even say it because I was taking down the goalpost plenty of times. Right, but like you're comparing that to like Philadelphia literally went out when they won the Super Bowl. I mean, they did it when they won the NFC Championship game this year. So they went out and they started flipping cars out on the streets. Every every, not every team, but a lot of cities, partially because of the bad people, not so much the fan base will use a celebration of a national, like, sports thing as an excuse to riot. No. They, they did it in Boston. They did it in Boston when the Red Sox finally won for the first time in 86 years. That's not Philly, though. Philly's just garbage fans. Uh, I know. I understand that. What I'm saying is a lot, of, a lot of teams will do that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, a lot of people will take advantage of the situation. Um, no, I just... But in, in situations where um, I'm not going to name names, and I'm not even going to bring someone into it really, but uh, when when the Eagles beat the Niners, someone made fun of the fact that Brock Purdy had maybe ended his career already, and they were an Eagles fan. I also had a Twitter guy the other day tell me that UC or that Tommy John surgery is not for a torn UCL; it's for a worn out UCL, and he has a fresh one, so he won't need Tommy John. You look up torn UCL surgery, it literally pops up Tommy John surgery. Yeah. But back to where I was going, this Chiefs fan tells me that Travis Kelce, and that is the correct way to say his name, he has come out and said that it's not Kelsey, but they just go with it because that's how everybody says it. Travis Kelce is the top three tight end of all time. No. You know the three I put over him? Tony G, which actually is part of what leads to the whole part I'm talking about here for the story wise. Tony G, Dave Casper, Shannon Sharp. And if you don't like Dave Casper in there, Kel Winslow. And then rounding out the top five, Kels and Gronk. Where's Jason Witten? That's six. Maybe fifth. I'll put him I, in front of Gronk, but I won't put him in front of Kells. I, I think he's got to be at least top five. Where do you put Clark? He's right behind him. It, it's a tough top ten for tight ends because there's been so many great tight ends in the NFL. Like, I'll put my boy G. Reg from the 7th floor crew. Yeah. I'll put him at eighth. Yeah. Well, I'll I put guess him at 10th. Greg Olson. You 10th. know. One thing that excites me, and 
not just because I saw his play this year being a Cowboys fan, but uh, Travis – sake, the man himself. No, Travis even brought it up not long ago that uh, he was excited to see uh, Hendershot. Yep. To see what he can do. And I mean, I thought you were talking about Dalton Schultz for a second. Oh, no. He's getting franchise tagged again. <laughs> uh, no, the fact that uh, Hendershot was, you know, given a little bit of a spotlight there. Who were the other two that he had thrown out there? I can't remember the other two names. And trust us, guys. We know about tight ends. We live. We are tight end you. Yeah, we live two miles away from tight end you cops. Um, yeah, that's what uh, there's another thing that's the number one recruit in the nation like for tight ends, and he has 30 scholarship offers. And Iowa wasn't on there, and I was like, and he doesn't even have one from tight end. You and somebody's like, yeah, he's got one from tight end. You that's Georgia, and I was like, you guys have one tight end right now that's good, and he's still on the Bulldogs. Well, he's getting drafted the next year, Ooh. but so what we talked about with Tony Gonzalez is so there's been this story recently Tom Brady tried to recruit Tony Gonzalez to come out of retirement. They went and played catch and all that, and Tony shows up. He's the, he goes, you know, I see Tom and I see a few other guys, and I'm like, okay. And he goes, where are the, all the other guys? He goes, oh, no, it's just you and me throwing the football around. And he's got Tony running routes and everything, and at the end he goes, God, man, you you look like you still you could still play, you know. Why don't you come join us in New England? Think about this. Tony Gonzalez comes to New England. This is all hypothetical. Keeps... Aaron Hernandez out of trouble as a veteran mentor. Because right then, they had Gronk and Hernandez, two young tight ends. You had no veteran presence. Tom Brady has at least one, if not two more Super Bowls. With that three-headed monster at tight end. Aaron Hernandez never does what he does. What happens if he does? That's a big hypothetical. That's what I'm saying. But think about that, though. Because here's the thing, though. You, you're sitting here throwing out the hypothetical and, you know, Gonzalez being that senior mentor. But you also have to take into consideration all the trouble that he got into at Florida. With no, I, I understand it. I understand That's what I'm saying. It's just, just think, though, if Gonzalez comes in and keeps him out of trouble. And the, the Chiefs fan tried to tell me that Tom Brady wouldn't have another Super Bowl. If you had Tony Gonzalez, Gronk, and Aaron Hernandez both in their prime. Uh, you never know, dude. If I think I think if they had an offensive line this year, he would have had a chance. If the Bucks did, yeah. You can't just have Tristan Wirfs and Ryan Jensen and think that you have an O line. You got Shaq Mason, which is you know Brady's old right guard, but even then, he is an old right guard. I don't know, because you also have to take into consideration there being too much there. That's like Cleveland when they had when they brought in. Like Jarvis Landry and Odo Beckham Jr. Oh. I think there was just too much there. But that's the thing is they didn't account for Odell's ego. Odell Beckham is not a good – he's an okay receiver. He's flashy. He's a big target, though. Yeah. He's not afraid to go up and get the ball. He'll fight for it. But, again, he's been locked up by unknown corners. Um, I don't know. I, I was, as a Cowboys fan, before they signed T.Y., uh, I was all on the Odell train, hoping that they would get him. But uh, I'm glad they didn't because he said he wasn't even going to be ready for the playoffs. I'm like – I, I want to be on the Odell train. When he was a free agent, and everybody's like, oh, New England should sign him. I'm like, no, please don't. But granted, you know, look what Bill did with Randy Moss and Dante Salworth. You take – Moss wasn't as self-centered about it, though. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But Moss was still kind of obnoxious, but he wasn't – That's he was just his team, personality, He was though. a team guy. Yeah. Whereas Odell is obnoxious, and it's got to be all about me. Right. I don't think it's got to be all about Odell, but he's got to get what he wants. Like, he wanted – like a three to five year contract, and I just and he hasn't even well, shown anything. He hasn't shown any practice tapes. He hasn't been on a live field since he tore his ACL in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, Odell's one of those that he can't go to a team where they already have a number one. 
but he went to the Rams. That's true. They did have Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup is, even with his injury this last year, he is the Cooper. best receiver in the league. Cooper Cup is a dog. Best receiver? I wouldn't say best. Most consistent receiver, for sure. But the thing is, I think that Matthew Stafford did a good job of giving both of them the ball for the short time that he was there. Odell is one of those that if he doesn't get the ball, he does exactly what he did to Baker. And has his dad, you know, point out all these times and all that and causes a big scene about it. That's why I did not want him in New England. Because New England right now does not have a good receiver core, but we have a very strong, balanced receiver core. Yeah. Well, and see, here's the thing. I like the way that Stephon Diggs goes about it. Because there was, like, late in the year, Stephon Diggs was, like, you know, wanted the ball. But he was mature about it. Uh, do you see him in the playoff? Yeah, yeah. Until the playoff game. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But one. the one thing that Stephon Diggs, I guess, kind of has over Odell is Stephon's never been a number one receiver. Because Buffalo what already has Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen. Know. Adam Thielen have more targets than Stephon Diggs. I'm not going to get on that one. Uh, if I were to say anything, I think Diggs is a number one receiver that gets number two looks. Absolutely. yeah. That, that's is. how I'd put yes, it. He is the number one receiver, but he's never been the number one. No, receiver. but I think it's because he's covered. Yeah. He's double covered all the time. And he just I, – he, I don't think he has the skill set to beat that like a lot of people of past generations. Megatron – Moss, Rice, they could all beat double coverage and still put up numbers week to week to week. And that's that's kind of my fear with uh, Justin Jefferson right now. It's like he shows a lot of promise, but... I, I love Kirk Thuggins a lot. But Justin Jefferson needs a new quarterback. I love somebody said, if you put Justin Jefferson on the Chiefs, he's the best receiver of all time. Mm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. No. Um, what do you guys think about the Daytona 500? So the one thing, I didn't get to see it, obviously, like I said, because Fox had things keep, you know, I got to see a little bit of it. I didn't get to see the finish because I had to go bowl. But from what everybody was talking about this year, the commercial breaks were insane. Dude, it was like every five minutes. You missed literally like, a, I think it was like 36% of the race. They pulled the stats on there for the past three years. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It also, was... here's my thing. Take stages out of NASCAR. I've never liked them since I came in. I thought it was dumb when they were talking about it. Also, they've taken them out of the road course. I think it did. Take them completely out. This this year, they've taken stages out of road course. Maybe that's maybe that's a way to start phasing it out. You know what race I can't wait to watch this year? Not Bristol Dirt. That's good and all. The Chicago Chicago road road course. course. Dude, I'm looking forward to that one actually. Yeah. Um. So the one thing that I did like about the Daytona 500 is the fact that Kyle Busch didn't win. I absolutely, I love that every week that Kyle Busch does not win. The other thing that I don't like, put the clash back at Daytona. Fuck LA Coliseum. Or how about we do it somewhere different every year and stop building think, tracks inside of football stadiums? Well, that, I think they should hold it in different spots every year. I'm all for that too, but I guess the thing with that. And the thing that everybody's going to bring up, not the thing with that, but the thing that everybody's going to bring up, oh, the travel logistics of it. You have two weeks till the 500. You have a week till you have to be back in Daytona. You're telling me if you hold the – You know what I want to see? the race in Phoenix, you can't get the car there by a week? You you, you already have it in the no, Coliseum. Exactly. So, well, so here's the thing, though. You already have it in the Coliseum. So you have to travel from L.A. to 
Florida. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. People bring up the travel logistics of it. Yeah, it's just as bad regardless. Um, what I want to see is like what MLB has been doing recently with the, the Field of Dream game. I want to see NASCAR come somewhere in the Midwest to a local asphalt track. Here's, here's There's like 43 people in the stands because that's all that their grandstands can hold. <laughs> here's the, here's the issue with that, though. that would have to. I would love to see. I would love to see a NASCAR race at Iowa Speedway over the summer. But as far as like the clash goes and rotating that, weather wise, you couldn't have it here. In Do it for the All Star race. For sure, 100. percent Like so I said, the, over the summer sometime. Yeah. So the problem that they have with bringing a Cup Series race into the Iowa Speedway is they don't have enough seating. Uh, they don't even have a contract with NASCAR anymore. Yeah. No yeah, trucks. All, all the hell is Indy, IndyCar. Yeah, because they don't want to pay money. Well, nobody wants to spend the money on IndyCar. So the price jump from last year to this year. Oh, I know because we had tickets last year. Ridiculous. It doubled. So last week or last year for one day it was seventy five dollars. This year is one hundred fifty eight eighty eight. Well, after tax. You know the the only the only reason IndyCar is still there is because they have the contract with Hyvee. Yep. This was our first year of having. We that is the only reason that they were still at the Iowa. Well, yes, and the Iowa Speedway. If they did not have that, I guarantee you, IndyCar would not be here. But who did they have it with before then? Well, no, I'm just saying the fact that the Iowa Speedway has driven everything out. There's no more ARCA. There's no more. Uh, they don't have the Xfinity. Canada, there's no more Xfinity. There's Canada, no truck. Sucks. They forced everything out. I think if it was not for the high V contract, IndyCar would not be here. Yeah. And here's the thing is I'm gonna go off the record here, so to speak. Because this won't be a uh, a videotaped episode. Let's roll on. Oh, let me mute you real quick. Nope. <laughs> I can mute you. If you want me to? Yeah, let me uh mute. And we're back. It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Uh, no, I, I think my favorite part of the whole thing was seeing uh, the video of Stenhouse taking the trophy to a Waffle House. Absolutely. Yep. Ricky Stenhouse is 100% a G for that. <laughs> and I love how you watch it, and there's one couple sitting there. And then the kitchen staff's like, do we have a winner? He goes, yeah, it's a winner. <laughs> Uh, that, that was probably the best part of the... Speaking of that, shout out to Waffle House for being all over my Twitter feed with the best fights of all time in the past three months. Who else was there recently? I swear, an NFL player just did it. I, was, I don't know, but it looked like Floyd Mayweather was in a couple of those videos that I've seen. Okay. Just swinging. So, <laughs> all right. I'll throw something else out there. This Sunday... Jake Paul. I cannot say that, man. 100% can't. I hope he gets shit kicked out of him. I hope Fury. I want to see him. that, man. Fury will beat him. So, There's what's your. Okay, so. Jake and Logan, both so of them, all their what? fights have been so staged and bullshit. You fight That's Floyd why Logan's in the no, WWE now. Yeah, you fight Floyd, exactly. but there's no, no knockouts allowed. Exactly. Look, it was all for money. They knew people were going to buy into it. I mean, here's the thing. I don't like them as fighters. I really don't. But you have to give credit where credit's due. They have made so much money. 
That's all it's about. That's all anything was about. I mean, was making money. Look, it, they kn- they knew the name, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, very polarizing names of recent. But they they knew if they put like, oh, he's gonna fight Mayweather. Do you know how many people are gonna pay a hundred bucks to see some internet celebrity possibly be knocked out by Mayweather? You know what I'd love to see. No script, no nothing, just straight up fighting. Conor McGregor and Forrest Griffin versus both of them. Just in an octagon. You were that. I want to see Conor back, though. Can I, can I uh, interject something into that? Can we allow weapons? I want to see someone throw someone through a fucking table or, my God, a steel chair. Have Randy, Jim Rob. Randy Orton in a place they've never seen Just him set before. Him up with a WWE match. <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, <laughs> RPO in midair. Uh, they get Pat McAfee no, hear me out, hear me out. The Paul Brothers versus the Big Show. That's 700 pounds of man taking on 450 pounds of tea. That is a, a lot of man meat. It's <laughs> a lot of man meat. It is a lot of man meat. Um, That's right up my alley. <laughs> speaking of alleys, <laughs> so I was bowling last night. and uh, It's colonial. Were you really bowling or were you just throwing a lane at him? Or bowling on a lane? I, I, sh- I shot 247 game one. Oh, boy. Didn't break 600. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> you threw like 160 the second game. <laughs> Dude, it, the, the shot went away. It was so, so Monday bad. night? What did you do that third game? Uh, 190 something. I needed the first strike to break six, and I buried it and left a 10 pin. So, uh, Shocker. Monday night, 215, 202. First four. Threw the ball a little too slow, left 369.10, punched out for 276. Shot 693. I've bowled once all year. <laughs> so and, I, and you I, averaged like 170. Hey, it was over 180. Mm. But guess what? Derek, I think it was like 180 something. Derek Hine and the crew on Monday night only beat off in the woods one time. Nothing to say to that. <laughs> Nothing. You're just, you're dropping shit now. Is that your new phone? Not a new phone. It's been my phone for over a year. So I started my Snapchat streak with my wife because, you know, my old phone, the camera would randomly work. I started my Snapchat streak with my wife the day I got this phone. So I can tell you exactly how many days I've had this phone. It is 434. Because we have not broken that streak. You want to see something impressive? I don't have. Look at this. 1,385 days. Is that with Bravo? Is that with Randy? Yeah. No, it's with me, Bobby. You didn't know? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I it, wake up at 4 30 every morning with... and send him a dick pic. <laughs> it ain't with me because I don't have Snapchat. <laughs> I know. Because I'd have you. Unsolicited every morning. It's just, I, I'll send him like. My... That's my. Uh, I'll wake up with my bed morning. hair and just be like, "God damn, bad hair day!" And it's just my dick hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call you Sasquatch. You know the term. Ironically, that's actually my uh, my fantasy league name: unsolicited Dak picks. Indeed, it I, is. I, I beat indeed. unsolicited Dak picks this year. I thought you. I thought you meant like. <laughs> Like your fantasy, like I, I thought you want to be dicked by Sasquatch. <laughs> Wait, that's not your fantasy. <laughs> I thought that was everybody's fantasy. That's my fantasy. No, I'm by myself on no, this one. No, Bobby, you're with me. Don't worry. I'm, I'm more. We're on a train on both of us. I'm more of a moth. Do it again. God 
Damn it. I gotta move over. It's also what it sounds like when my sl ball slap against Keegan's ass. Jesus. Let me just. <laughs> uh, Can I get a oh yeah? Oh yeah? No, I'm more of a Mothman type of guy. The big B red eyes does it for you, doesn't it? It would. It's it's that ass. Have you seen it? Yes. <laughs> Have you seen it? The big cheeks. Are we about to pull up BuzzFeed Unsolved? <laughs> we are. <laughs> uh, Mothman statue. Hmm. Back. <laughs> Back. <laughs> that is that is a search. That, that's like soul in high school top view. <laughs> Penis high. Penis high. Where our main exports are sluts and pricks. Them cheeks. Yeah, where where is the money shot? Well, there's the dump truck, kinda side view of it. I want to see the actual dumpy. There it is. There it is. Oh. Are we gonna? Are we gonna load? Remain in the room. That's the website is the box and box accessories. <sighs> what kind of box are we talking? Do we got Mothman flashlights? Whoa. <laughs> mm, look at them cheeks, boy. <laughs> look at them cheeks. Something about mythical being cheeks that just does it for you. <laughs> I tell you what, man. You know what really, you know what really turns me on? Chupacabra cunt. <laughs> or La Cucaracha. Isn't that a song? We all know it's Tom Brady. Absolutely not. Oh, you like so him? So actually, you like him bigger. No, nah, I should I shouldn't bring that up. Never mind. Gronk. No, I I was gonna bring up something else, but I shouldn't do it because he's passed away now. You guys didn't hear about that? Are you Are you into necrophilia? No, 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 no. Aaron Rodgers used to have his quarterback fuck him in the ass for every high school game. Or Aaron, sorry, Aaron Hernandez, not, not Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I knew he was a fudge packer. <laughs> it makes so much sense why he got drafted there now. He's probably been doing it at Trey Lance. That's how he mentors him. Look, you tell me you don't want that staring you in the face. <laughs> Could you imagine the eye contact when that's sucking your dick? That's why Eddie Lacy left. <laughs> Cheeseburger yeah, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie Lacy left for fucking Culver's. <laughs> No, no, he moved. He you moved. know damn well Eddie got that Jack in the Box special, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, he left for warmer weather, and he's now eating good at In and Out. Hey, hey, you ever, you, you guys ever think that In and Out right now? <laughs> you ever think that Eddie Lacy? Oh fuck, what was it? And Ryan Leaf are related with how they both got way fatter. <laughs> you imagine Ryan Leaf work. trying to go around a revolving door? Wait, Ghost Rider statue? Oh. I am, shit. I, am, cheeks. I am curious. Oh, it's just like... Oh, so that's kind of cool. Oh, they're more like figurine kind of deal things. Collector's editions items. Hey, you guys want to go ghost hunting? You know what really turns me on? Let's go. Harry Carey statue right outside Wrigley Field. <laughs> Something about drunk old men. <laughs> Dude looks like he should have been like uh, hosting. Whose line was it, anyways? Oh, he is. He was Drew Carey before Drew Carey. Yeah, exactly. Carey. I swear. Um, now let's let's take the girls fucking ghost hunting. Let's go. Oh, 100 percent. I know Lo would absolutely be in love with it. Brandy would be down for it. I know because I've seen Brandy's post on Facebook about. We want to. Abandoned houses and shit like that. We want to. We no, just I we all need to do. To it. We all need to do this one trip. We need to spend, I think it's like seven or like 60 bucks a person, spend a night in the Velisca Axe Murder House. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm down. I'm 100% down. down with it. Who wants to go piss on the Black Angel? Yeah, I got time. <laughs> let's go. I got time. <laughs> I'm not about to walk on my wife. Yeah, hey, guess what we did on the podcast today? <laughs> we went mobile and pissed on the Black Angel. <laughs> 
I have now cursed this entire house. <laughs> We're going Facebook Live for this one, boys. We're going Facebook Live on this one. Oh, my God. No, John, I can't come into work Saturday. Why? Well, I broke my leg, my arm, my other leg, my other arm. And my back in four places. Velisca. I, I can't come uh, into work. Why? Um, there's something outside of my house. It won't <laughs> let me leave. What is it? The lock on the front door? <laughs> <laughs> the lock on the front door. <laughs> how high are you? No, John, as high, how are you? <laughs> you, you got it wrong. <laughs> Just some big, giant um, black angel. No, so this is one house that I've always kind of wanted to see, is uh, the Axe Murder house. And we just haven't gotten around to going out there yet. I absolutely want to go tour that, and the whole like museum and everything. So, You know the other one I want to go to? The uh, they did. I want to go to the Goatman's Bridge. Uh, what, what is it? The uh, the Stanley Hotel. Yep. Ooh, Stanley Hotel or uh, Bobby? Uh, what is it? Bobby Mackey's. Bobby Mackey's would be cool. Yeah, have you guys been into that abandoned asylum out in Tipton? No. Out in Tipton? No, I know there was one. There used to I be. I didn't one know there was one, one there. there. There's one like right outside of Tipton that me and a couple friends a while back ago went inside. There's nothing there. So okay, so this well, duh, it's abandoned. <laughs> nice dad joke there, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> so oh. so a few years ago, and I won't name any. I'm gonna change the names for legal purposes due to what you find out what a few people were doing on this trip. So my buddy, we'll call him Jackson. And a few of his buddies, he had a party at his house, so we were over there. And this is out in Bondurant, so I don't know if you guys know the story of Bondurant Ferrar. I do not. I have not heard this. So here, I'll, I'll, pull, heard that I'll, one. I'll pull up the Ferrar, uh, the Ferrar. Actually, I was just, apparently, when I was on my phone, about to send a Snapchat to Jackson. Um, so in Ferrar a while ago, and I'll pull up the actual uh, thing here to get the full details of it. While you're doing that, since we're talking about scary stuff, I'm going to take my hoodie off and uh, we're going to pop out the shirt. Whip out the belly? No, nope, we're going <laughs> to pop out the shirt here. Because like, your belly is not scary. That shirt might be. Easy. Push your chair back. You, you do. Guys. I am further back than everybody else. You don't need to run into the microphone. Move the chair. Hey, Bobby, it's crazy. You're further back than everybody else, but I'm the one with the longest legs here. Makes it easier to spread. Absolutely. (laughs) Got to pull out the Michael Myers out here. All right, so here we go. This is from from the Des Moines Register. It says, ghostly things happening in an empty school near Des Moines. Go on. So creepy things have been happening in this abandoned elementary school in Iowa. So the old Ferrar Elementary School sits isolated with only a few buildings around it, including a 150-year-old cemetery, cemetery just across the street. The school sits just 30, 30 minutes outside of Des Moines. That's a joke. It's like 15. Trust me, I've been there. That's where we're getting on this story. <laughs> okay, go, go on. And uh, In Ferrar, an unincorpor- unincorporated community in Polk County, but people who have entered the empty school building say there's definitely not alone there. The school was built in 1921 and officially opened to students in 1922. For 80 years, it served children in the Ferrar and Bondurant areas until close to 2001, when district leaders decided to consolidate and move students to Anderson Elementary in Bondurant. Over time, as the population dwindles in the Ferrar community, the only thing growing is the number of tombstones in the cemetery, the owners of the school wrote on their website. After sitting abandoned for five years in 2006, the building was purchased, but owners Jim and Nancy Oliver noticed something was off according to their website. They were told that over the last few decades before the school closed, students would notice slamming doors and strange figures wandering around. They later had their own paranormal experiences leading them and others to believe the shuttered school building is haunted, according to Oliver's website. So one thing that's not here on the Des Moines Register's thing is that apparently at one point in time there was a fire in that school that killed 14 people. Oldest one of them being 10 years old. Wow. Wow. So we went out there. Jackson, by the way, this whole time, apparently unbeknownst to me as we were doing beer bong pulls out on the back deck, 
went with a bunch of his friends and took probably two and a half tabs of acid. Oops. That's a good that, that that's, that's a preface <laughs> to the start of this story. <laughs> so we get out of there. And you know, I, I've watched enough ghost hunters and all that in my life to know that when they say you shouldn't incite the ghost, you should absolutely one hundred percent incite the ghost. So we're sitting there. Wear up, there, pussy. There is dead ass. I mean, we're seeing shadows and shit inside. Right. Granted, I'm not on anything. I, I've had two beer bong things, and that's it. Or two beer bong pulls of 12-ounce beers. And at that point in time, I was in my college prime, and I could drink a 12-pack a day and still walk and talk just fine. Thanks to all my exes for that ability that I no longer have. <laughs> <laughs> Lightweights. Thanks to my current wife. I no longer have that ability. So we're sitting out there, and it's probably like eight or nine of us. We took three cars. We parked over at the church right by that cemetery that they it referenced in there, and we walk across the street. I mean, we're like I said, we're seeing shadows. We're not even, I'm not even 20 feet under the property, and I feel three or four people standing around me. So we walk around the back side of the school, and it is there's a little playground over there still. No wind, no nothing. I think if I breathe, I could move these, you know, I could push grass and all that. All of a sudden, the swing just starts going like this. So my dumb ass. Did you sit on the swing? No, I did not. This is where the inside of the ghost parts go. I'll remind you, this is 23-year-old me. So not the smartest me that I've had. But I was me. I had to pee. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. I took a piss on the like by the playground as I'm sitting there the whole time. I was like, if you don't like me peeing on your land, fucking do something about it. And the swing begins moving faster. And another swing begins moving. And we hear like footsteps around us too. Those kids are ganging up on you. <laughs> yeah, they're not happy with me. I'm pissing all over their shit. <laughs> Um, so we continue walking around the school a little bit and like, again, absolutely no end whatsoever. I'm still getting, I'm getting chills right now from talking about this. There's bushes moving. You hear shit moving inside. Nobody's in the building. This is one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. Prime ghost hour. Absolutely. The witching hour. And all of a sudden Jackson's like, dude, I'm going back to the car. He's fucking tripping balls on acid. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackson works. goes back to the car. And then that's when a few of the people that were there, and I don't know their names, so I'm not going to change their names because I don't fucking know them, decided that it's going to be a fun idea to break into the school. Oh, no. Oh. They literally threw a rock through a window. and like One of them climbed in, and immediately not even two minutes was back out almost in tears. Well, then Jackson thinks it's a good idea to start honking the horn of the car. There is a house inhabited by a family not even 10 feet off school property. School property, quote unquote. <coughs> so I'm like, fuck. So I get back to the, me and this other guy, we get in his Mustang. Somebody gets in Jackson's car and drives that. As we're getting in the Mustang, and Jackson still swears that he never saw anybody driving it. I never saw anybody driving it either. But all of a sudden, this PT Cruiser that's parked out in the front of that driveway, it's one of those curved driveways that goes around to the side of the house. But it, was, it wasn't parked there when we got there. But all of a sudden, it's parked out in the front. And they followed us all the way back to Bondurant. Actually, they followed us to Pleasant Hill, which is another like 10 minutes past Bondurant. And they're on her ass, and dude's in a fucking Mustang, and they decide to follow him. Granted, I'm in that car. I'm like, oh, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck did I get into? We ended up losing him on the interstate. We went, got on the interstate, went, got far enough ahead that we were able to go on the next exit, and they didn't see us and all that, and went back. And that's when I realized like, what, what Jackson was saying. I was looking in the side view mirrors that were, you know, right behind us at the, the stoplight. I couldn't see anybody in that car. 
whether they, you know, just had black clothing on or not. But I couldn't see anybody wait. in the car. But granted, this again, this is two o'clock in the morning. So wait, wait, you're saying you're you couldn't see them in the mirror. Right? I couldn't see him. I couldn't see anybody in the car in the mirror. So, is it possible that there's a vampire driving that car? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could have been possible. Uh, dude, we were at a fucking haunted school. I would uh, 100% feel anything like... Anything is possible after what I just experienced. But but dead ass, for like three weeks after that, I had the same recurring nightmare that I was one of the kids that died in that school fire. Really? Not every night, but it was so at least twice a week. Did, did Homie ever say what he saw when he went into the school? I did not ever hear that story because they went back to a different house because despite throwing a rock through the window or some sort of brick or something, he also sliced his hand pretty bad up getting into that window. Maybe that's why he was crying. <laughs> no, he, he was coming out saying he was seeing shit, but at the same time... Dude, I'm, like, I'm, I'm interested to... I say we, I say we need to take a, a, a trip to Ferrari. You know, you know I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I... We see some stuff upstairs. Oh, dude, your old house is haunted. I, I've been there in that. Well, yeah, but no, I mean like upstairs. Like oh. either something followed me or something was here because there's stuff that happens upstairs. Like uh, we'll be laying in bed, lights off. And just somebody farts on the couch and he realizes my ghost is still here from when I lived here. No, no, dude, like we'll be just laying there and talking or whatever and we'll see shadows in the corner of the room and – uh Hey, there's one time, you know, the, the closet right in the entryway? Yeah. Dude, uh, like, clear as day, just coming from that closet. Open it, it would go away. Nothing was in there. Close it. 30 minutes later, no idea what it was. Never found it. It hasn't happened again. Dude, he was just trying to read you over your car's extended warranty. Then why are you knocking at my closet and not the front Should door? Have it. No. 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 Charlie wouldn't do that. You just chew on stuff. <laughs> uh, Keegan would walk out in his headset would be chewed apart. He'd be like, what the fuck? Dude, uh, I got remnants of that right here, actually. Yep. Um, no, uh, it, it freaked Victor out one day. Like, he, he growled at that closet. There was no noise coming from it one day, and he just growled at it dude that's the thing is animals can see shit that we can't i'm dead ass convinced because when like my aunt's dog casey granted you know she was a rescue she was abused she was dumped at the campground when we first started going camping like anytime my aunt left she couldn't couldn't do it she right eat. but like all of a sudden we're sitting there and granted i have lived when i live with my aunt this was the same trailer that i grew up in in lake ridge same exact trailer moved to des moines I've lived in that house my not my entire life, obviously, because I've spent four years in Seoul and we didn't get that house till I was like three or four. But all of a sudden, we'd be sitting there and it would be me and Casey home alone. Cindy would be gone for the weekend. Uh, and all of a sudden, Casey would just look at my room where she's been in countless numbers of times and you could see the hair on the back of her neck stand up and she would just start growling or just stand there and look at it. Huh. And I'm like, okay, like, what's going on? And I walked in there, and then she would back up. I'm like, the only person that's been here or possibly ever felt like they were dead in this room was me. So I don't know what you're doing here, dog, but but they can 100%. I, I 100% believe that dogs can see shit that we can't. You know, I, there are things, like, not not so much ghosts, but apparently like just demonic energies can just manifest. Oh, absolutely. Just yeah. manifest out of nowhere. Like it could be a brand new home and they just manifest. I mean, look at uh have you seen like these places where like uh Indian burial grounds are built on top of it and weird stuff happens. Right. And yeah, it, it feeds off the energy. <laughs> and it's weird. I, I know we were talking the other day about this and how you, you kinda need to see it to believe it. And I I understand that. But right, but we've seen it. Yeah, I, I don't know if Bobby has, but we so, have seen it. So that's that's my biggest thing with a lot of that stuff, because <clears throat> I've never really experienced anything like that. So like that's where dude, go hang out at Kyle's house for a week. You'll experience oh all. Oh my of god, it. Dude, <laughs> that that place. I was I literally I, I lived in the basement of his house. I would be laying there. He's upstairs, and all of a sudden I hear.
but that's like with with I mean even with our trailer. <coughs> By the way, trailer park gang three one nine. The older. <laughs> um, Can't all right, well, it's all right. We'll older, you in. <laughs> the older girls will sit there and talk about how they've seen things or yeah, you know, heard things. Absolutely. I've just I've never experienced anything like that. So it's for me, it's a little harder to believe and like harder to like sit there and say that I believe in stuff like that. Um, but here's the thing: you also don't discredit when people talk about it. That's a lot of people that. They haven't ever seen it, but oh, like, I'll, I'll believe it when I see yeah, it. it does not. They'll be like, no, it doesn't right. exist. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of stories. I mean, even my dad. I mean, my dad had an experience with uh, – down at Centerville. Um, well, that's the first or, That's the first issue with that at Centerville. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> it's kind of like a meth machine. There's ghosts all around. The cops are the dealers out there, bro. Like it's it's so messed up. Hey, and the government's got to make its money. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Speaking I of cops that. being dealers, when I was gonna go to college to be a cop, you know what my friends first told me? You know what the best kind of weed is? Evidence room weed. Evidence. <laughs> yep. Um, but my dad is when he was younger had an experience out at my grandma and grandpa's place. Um. So it's like I don't necessarily discredit it. But, like, I've never personally experienced it. Right. So I guess that's why I'm always willing and, like, intrigued to go to places like this. Because maybe I will experience it. Right. Uh, It's definitely something that if you don't experience it, it's hard to believe. Um, But when you do experience it for the first time and you get those chills thrown up your spine... Uh, it's weird. It, the bowling alley, dude. Uh, I was just going to say, Bobby, you, you bowl in a haunted bowling alley. There's some weird stuff that goes on there. There's right. one that – well, you've heard of I think me and Keegan's talked about some of them a couple times. Did dude, you, uh, did you tell you about my, my ball that was on the thumb hole? I don't think I've ever heard of So we were, we were bowling on 16. Art was closing. Art's back in the office. No more than throw a ball and 16 randomly shuts off. No fuse issue, no nothing. The switch wasn't flipped. It just it shuts off, and then it turns back on after the ball goes through. No, no, no. What happened? It so it turned off, like off, off, and we looked up towards the front, making sure no one was fucking with the panels or whatever. Right. So Seth was like, "Ah, eh, maybe it has a deck jam or something." So Seth runs back there, and me and Dalton are sitting there, like just waiting for him to come back, and. You see the lights flicker. Dude, as soon as he opened the door and the door shut, like he's not even down the step yet, and the lane flips back on, the lights turn off in the back, and Seth, no sooner that the door closes, it slams back open. He's sprinting. He's like, I'm fucking done. I'm done. So, I'm so then we finish up bowling. <laughs> Granted, I wasn't I wasn't working there at the time, so I couldn't leave my shit in the back. They right. go back there to put their shit back. I walk out by the counter to put my ball in my bag. I set my ball on the thumb hole by the bag or by the counter. Right. I grab my other ball and put it in the or in its bag. I turn around. That ball is gone. There in the back, I look down, and that ball is sitting by the approach on 16. It had rolled like 25 feet. On the thumb hole where it cannot roll. There, there was some weird stuff. Dude, and you didn't hear any noise of it rolling, or else I would have been like, what the fuck, and turn around. So, uh, so where, was, where was your bag? Up there. On the desk. Yeah. So it would have had to roll down the steps. No, his ball was on the ground. His bag was on the desk. He put one in. He went to grab it off the ground. Yes, but Bobby's saying it would have had to roll down the steps so like the ball, down to oh, get yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, yeah. It would have That's had what to I'm like saying. That's what I'm saying. I didn't hear anything. Yes, no, it would, it would have to physically make noise. Um, <laughs> so did he ever show you the blood spatter from the stairway of no return? Uh, or the stairway to nowhere in the back? I don't think so. There's a spot on the wall that is inconspicuously red. Oh, yeah. So a few years... Er, Where at? In the back behind the high side. There's a stairway that leads to the roof. Yeah. So apparently... Uh, shit, I don't know how long it's been now. Apparently somebody broke in and the person that was working hit up there and the guy shot him twice, killed him. This was back in the 60s or 70s. I just didn't hear that one, actually. That's what I've been told. I'll have to ask about that. Um, 
I've I've never been in the back. I've never worked there, so I don't get to go to the back. You've been back there with me. What the fuck are you talking about? You take his balls back every week. For everybody's asses, bro. Um, <laughs> you think Brad so, gives a shit? As long as you're not Oji, he don't care. <laughs> so, you, do you guys know about the the mark of the beast? Yeah, no. kind of, sorta. The the Holy Trinity, three yeah. three scratches or yeah. three marks or whatever. Well, there was one day I was working at the bowling alley, and this was twenty twenty one. I want to say, and I was, I had to help Brad do something in the bar. It was this a Wednesday? Cause I was there. If it was a Wednesday. Cause I, I, can't, I can't remember what, I can't remember what night it was. It may have been, but I was helping Brad do something in the bar. We had to like fix a line or something. Yep. I was there. And dude, I'm under there and I'm like on the ground. Like there's nothing above me that I can touch. I mean, the bar is above me, but I, it's this far to the ground. Right. And I'm on my stomach. Nothing can touch me from the bar. And all of a sudden, I had this burning sensation on the back of my neck. I'm like, did something just bite me or something like that? I'm like, whatever. I finally finished. I got Brad the, the line or whatever it was we were doing. And I uh, didn't think anything of it. I come home, and I'm, like, rubbing my neck. And Penny's like, what's wrong? I'm like, my neck hurts. And she's like, let me look. And she pulled her phone out. And put the light on it, and there's three distinct red marks. It's just like this, is right straight through here. Yeah, like this, this long, three of them down the middle of my neck, and that that those three marks are normally indication of a demonic presence. Right. That's why they. They're. That's why a lot of people with like the monster cans. How they've said that oh, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of uh, like demonic yeah. stuff with like the monster cans with the whole M. Yeah, the three yeah. Marks Th- they have that, but they, they don't get as mad over liquid death. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think that that might be physically the worst thing that has ever happened to me is being physically scratched. And you know, had it just been like, oh, here's one little scratch, or it's jagged or something like that. The fact that it was the fact that it was three the, of them. The mark of the beast was little weird to me. Right. I'm like, I, you know, I, I played it off. Like when I was there, I'm like, yeah, maybe I hit something on my way up, but I was laying down. Maybe something bit me. You know, it's, it's a dank bar in a bowling alley. Yeah. There, it's bound to be spiders or something, but no, it was. Plus we live in Iowa. Yeah. It was <laughs> three distinct scratches down my neck. And I'm like, that is crazy because I, believe in this stuff and the fact that it literally just happened and it's clear as day right and and it's not so much even that you have to believe in it you just have to be open-minded because if you have a closed mind the immediately first thing you're going to think is oh i must have bumped something well so whether that's true or not you you know so my my buddy Paige, uh who i worked with at ford Paige is dope love Paige. um he uh he doesn't believe in it but uh, I was talking about it, like, the day after it happened. I'm like, dude, check this out. And I pull my shirt down so he can see it on my neck. And he's like, what would you scratch yourself on? I'm like, I didn't scratch myself. I'm like, have you heard of this? And I told him about what the three scratches mean and right. all that stuff. And he's like, I mean, I can't explain it. And I'm like, he's still like, it needs to happen to me to believe. I'm like, I understand. But, like, I'm just, like, there is some, right. some things can happen. And it's you can't explain it. Right. And, and the worst the worst one is is like well i guess i shouldn't say the worst one the most like confirming is is when you have something like that happen to you and you show somebody that and immediately like whoa yeah i know what that is you know or oh it's happened to me before and that's that's the most confirming thing with it and that's what nobody wants to look at is the fact that two people that don't know each other could show each other something yeah and that person would be like, yeah, it's happened to me. And that literally confirms it. Like, we're, we're not alone here. There's exactly. ghosts. There's, there's something. There's something else out there. there. There's no way that I hear my name countless numbers of times in my friend's house's basement after staying there for only a week. And you can't tell me that there's not something else there. It was me. Look, so we're going to leave it at that. There, there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of sides to this tale, but um, well, we've been going at this for almost two hours now, and uh, I think this is probably a good place to leave it since it is almost nine o'clock, and I've got to try and either throw this video together so it can upload overnight or try and figure that out.
That's what I said. I was just telling Lola. I was telling her that we got on the topic of ghost stories. But, she uh, was oh spooky as a cat. I'm really excited for you to hear this. I'm hoping you post it sometime soon so you can hear all this. Uh, I'm going to try my best to get it posted up tonight. It might not be live until tomorrow, but um, hopefully in the next episode we'll have a little bit more of a grasp of what we're doing. And um, I said this when you guys were out on break. Uh, we don't know what we're doing, and we're learning as we go. And uh, it's going to be bad at first, but I hope that we can bring some entertaining stories and random insights of Wait, obscure I? sport knowledge. It will get better. Did I, did it will. I, did I? <laughs> well, not so much obscure sport knowledge because we just got one on the topic of ghosts, but I, have I told the sweet corn story that I told you guys already yet? On, on you told us before we uh, got on air, yeah. Yeah. So okay, so I work in produce. This will be a quick story. Never have I ever wanted to look at a customer and be like, "Hey, you're not fucking from here, are you?" <laughs> Lady walks up to me the other day, and we have these four packs of sweet corn that are from Florida or Georgia or something, somewhere where it's close to season. Lady walks up to me and she points at these, and she looks at me. And she goes, "Is this sweet corn in season?" And I was like, yeah, it's February. I wanted to be like, yeah, it's February in Iowa. We just picked it. It's yeah, first, we, first of the year, first of the season. Just picked it yesterday. Pulled it out of the greenhouse in the back. <laughs> the crops are really uh, really early this year. I had to dig through the season. I had to dig through the pot we're growing in the back of Ivy to to get to the corn, but we Farmer, got it. <laughs> farmers trying to beat all the rain this year. <laughs> oh my god. Since all right. Anyways, uh, we'll have rain. <laughs> I got to take a piss. Uh, it's been almost two hours that we've been at God this. forbid earlier when we wanted to do it, it was a big deal. <laughs> I'm trying not to leave a video <laughs> sit here for like 10 minutes while you guys circle jerk out there. Anyways, uh, we're three village idiots. This is semi-serious. Come on. Uh, it'll get better. We're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, it's already um, God, uh, I need to open my app so I can stop the video. Um. No, it, it's been a lot of fun. We got a little off topic, but once we kind of got on topic there, I, I think it went smooth. Um, it's kind of going to be whatever the hell we want it to be from week to week. Uh, some weeks it could be very sport heavy. Other weeks we'll go off topic and talk about. Kind of like we did tonight. Ghost Haunted stories. Houses. Stuff like that. Um, Haunted houses and circle jerks. Also 100% safe space. I mean, look at the look at the way we talk tonight. It's it's one hundred percent safe space. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'll have this uploaded uh, as soon as I can. Um, if there's anything that you want us to talk about, or if you got some weird stories, leave them down in the comments. Um, here soon, probably in the next month or so, we'll probably do a live version of this where we can take live questions. Then maybe next football season we'll discuss what a catch actually is in the NFL. <sighs> they can't figure that one out. Anyways, never know what that that's is. it. <laughs> this out. is all a joke. We're semi-serious. Thank Love you guys. You